Good evening. It is Tuesday, March 21st, and I'm doing another drive home from my gym here in St. Paul, Minnesota, back to my house, which is in Northeast Minneapolis. Um, this is the second time now with FSD Beta 11.3.2. Um, I've been doing this uh, the route with, so this is my second time down here. Sorry, I was a little distracted by it. what the car was doing there. It was straying a little too much towards dead space there. But anyways, um, second time doing this route. Um, had a couple interesting things in downtown St. Paul that happened that with the drive yesterday that I haven't seen before with the few drives I did with 11.3.1. So I want to do this drive again to see if those same behavioral traits come come back. Um, one of which was there's two turn lanes before we get on to I-94 West uh, that we can use. Both go to the same, you know, on-ramp, if you will. And for whatever reason yesterday, the car acted like it was going to get in the leftmost turn lane. And then at the last second, it decided to cut back to the right lane. And some car was right behind us. We had some space, but it was a little tighter than I would have liked. And it didn't make really any sense why the car aborted the lane change. So um, I want to look for that. Um, and then we just had some other odd behavior where the car kind of got itself in a little bit of trouble and required to be disengaged to... Uh, so let's see if this drive goes any better than yesterday. You know, overall, my experience with Dot 2 has been pretty good so far. Um, it's been, I would say, a little bit of a step backwards from Dot 1. Um, just from my experience, I did quite a bit of drives with Dot 1. And it was, for the most part, pretty solid. It had some weirdness in the beginning, but it really turned into a, a really good build. I think one of my favorites so far that I've tested. Um, since the early 10 builds and I mean it's I mean the highway driving has been my favorite part about this so far it's been really solid um, but yeah let's just kind of see how it does through uh, does here in downtown St. Paul and we'll kind of go from there all right so we got a little bit more traffic today at that problem spot that we faced up here at this next intersection which is really we're on West or 7th Street, which will turn into 5th Street, which then turns into an I-94 West. So this might throw off and be harder to replicate yesterday's behavior, but let's just kind of see how it does. Another variable we can throw into the mix here with all the cars here. And you can see it's already highlighting and then it goes back and forth between the turn lanes that it wants to use. So let's see what it does. It just needs to pick one. Now the problem with being in this lane is now it has to stay to the right and now we're actually going to have to stop short. Good job getting on the brakes there. A little abrupt but I again would rather it stop than kind of put us out in no man's land. Alright we have green here. Let's see if the car stays properly to the, the right this time. There's a car there so it can't cut over and you're seeing it's trying to do it. So I'm going to take over there. and. It's trying to be a little forceful, and I'm really not a fan of that behavior. The car needs to align itself to that outside curb, and for whatever reason, it decides to abort at the last second, and then now we're trying to go through a red there. It sees that light, so um, again, you can see it just dinged us there, too. I'm going to report that. I missed my hit cue to hit the uh, voice and gate um, notes there, but... Yeah, that was definitely not good again, and it continues to struggle there. I saw the same thing, to be fair, with 11.3.1, um, and, you know, again, it seems to be very consistent with this new planning behavior, so they're going to definitely have to fix that. Um, but to be fair, 10.x also really struggled there, and unless I was in the far left turn line, it would never get that right and always require some sort of um, intervention there, so... Um, again, more issues here in St. Paul. St. Paul's tough, but, you know, these intersections are pretty common, unfortunately, on the Twin Cities. So, we'll have to get it right eventually at some point. As you can see, the lights are super confusing around here, so it definitely confused the car. The car definitely wanted to kind of go through that intersection there, and I was able to disengage, but... Um, you know, this section up here, I'm going to actually just adjust the speed and give it a little bit more throttle here. So I'm not on the throttle right now, I'm just adjusting the max speed limit, but um, this area up here is where, an area where 10.x would be really bad, in my opinion. It would be zigzagging all over the place, and as you can see here, the line selection is really, really good. 
um, dot ele and 11 dot 3 1 and 3 2 see how it stays to the right and then it stays to the left here as we kind of come around this sweeping left turn here maybe an erroneous signal there but no harm there it's not a big deal and then like I said no throttle inputs required for me I gave it a little more throttle just to be a little more, go a little faster and not hold traffic up behind us around that corner but Honestly, really good good behavior there. That continues to be a big strong spot for 10, I'm sorry, 11.3 in general so far, so. And one thing that I've noticed so far with 11.3.2, and I, it could just be I could be just missing something here, but it, from my experience so far, the car is a little bit more aggressive with the auto lane changes on the highway if there's somebody behind us and are, you know, waiting kind of behind us in the, in the next lane, in the adjacent lane. Uh, in 3.1, the car would hesitate a little too much, at least the first couple days of driving. It got better as it went on, but it seems like the behavior with auto lane changes is a little bit more assertive in dot two, which I'm perfectly fine with. It has not yet got itself in big trouble in terms of not being able to get over fast enough or any of those issues that I used to see a lot with navigating autopilot. Those are a thing of the past so far with 11.3. Alright, so we're just exiting I-94 West right now, and this should be another strong spot for FSD Beta here. So again, it stays to the right, it's kind of a bit of a blind curve there, and then it kind of moves over to the left, just like a good human driver would to handle that. So um, that behavior continues to be there with every single drive I do through this area with 11.3.1 and .2 as well. bit of slowing there it, it always kind of does that if we're in this left lane um, but it recovers pretty quickly and you know I'm fine with it being a little more cautious if it doesn't know if it can see that our light is yet you know red or green um, one behavioral trait that's consistent across pretty much every drive I do with 11.3 so far is that when it does slow it doesn't like jam on the brakes it's not abrupt it's smooth it lets off we let we use more regen than we use mechanical brake which is really really good so I'm perfectly fine when it's cautious, I just want it to be smooth when it's doing so, you know. Great job handling the traffic there. It was getting a little busy with cars coming onto the freeway here on I-35 um, W uh, North. And I didn't have to press the throttle once. I was ready to, thinking it was going to overly hesitate. But it did a great job slowing a little bit and then getting in front of that car as it was merging. Did a very good job, like I would do if I was driving. So, again, you know, the car does a pretty good job in version 11 of dealing with traffic that is merging. I think one of the big gaps that still remains is when we are trying to merge onto the highway. We just kind of go to the merge point. We really don't signal or do the other things that I think are required to, to be more human-like. So 
Um, you know, again, though, some big progress made. When I'm critical of version 11, you know, obviously I do that with the best intention. So, it looks like, let's see if we queue up behind this car. In the past, it sometimes I've tried to go around them. Yeah, and not a bad job here, just getting over. Uh, I would prefer us to be a little bit closer to the line, but this is good. As long as it sits behind this car and waits until the light turns green, we're, we're in a good spot. Good job with that left turn. That continues to be another good spot for beta version 11. I've had some times coming at that intersection where a car coming the opposite way is protruding out into our lane a bit, our turn lane, and yet the car does a good job navigating around them. Didn't have that case this time, but um, good behavior nonetheless. And to get the car to follow the route that I want, I want to avoid some of the big nasty potholes on 37th Avenue Northeast. I'm going to hit end trip on this. So it's just going to continue to go straight. And then I have a, just a placeholder address I have here that should get us to follow the route we want to. All right, trying to get over now and we're getting close to the light so we're not going to have a lot of space. We're going to have to slot in behind this truck here. We did have a couple gaps back there I wish we would have used, but the car nonetheless is going to get over. Maybe be a little bit of a jerk by waiting so long, but the gap was pretty big. So it's just not my preference, but nonetheless it gets the job done. So I'm not going to complain too much about that. It's kind of like we had the opposite behavior for years with Navigate Autopilot where it would refuse to do a lot of lane changes when there was an ample space or it would take too long. And I'm, I'm definitely not going to complain about, you know, FSD beta being too assertive on auto lane changes because it gets the job done more times than not with version 11 so far from what I can tell. So much prefer this behavior, no doubt. And I don't feel like we like reduce safety or anything like that with this new behavior. The new behavior just definitely behaves more like a human, you know, which I, and that's a good thing in this case. Before it was definitely more robotic and it would just take forever to get a lane change to go, even if there was ample space. I'd always have to wait five seconds after it started signaling and it was just, it was just very painful. So oftentimes you had to be, you know, trigger manual lane changes. So if anybody's wondering if I miss navigating autopilot, I do not. So good job of the car catching it there. It commonly tries to do that. It tries to go in the middle there and it needs to wait because this is actually our turn lane here. Now the only issue with this intersection where the car kind of could improve, we carry a little bit too much speed, and if a car is coming at us, we have to kind of get on the brakes quickly. There was no car ahead of us that time, so no problems. Great behavior, smooth, confident, all of the, all of the above. Good stuff there. Um, but because of that section, if, if we do kind of do what we just did there and a car is coming on coming, it's going to cause issues for us. So I'm going to hit end trip here. I'm going to fix the speed here because again, in Minneapolis, still to this day, um, FSD has the wrong speed limits for all residential roads pretty much in Minneapolis. The max speed is actually 20. So we should not be doing any more than that. And unfortunately, the car thinks it should be 30. So anytime I'm operating FSD in these neighborhoods, you know, I am setting to 20 or less depending on traffic. All right, not great visibility because of these big snow banks here. And we're gonna be quite tight up around the corner here, so I'm gonna drop the speed to 15. And honestly, I feel like good speed around these neighborhoods is like 18 miles an hour. I feel like that's a pretty good speed.
little bit of a blind corner here. Let's see how it does. It's doing a good job of kind of staying close to these parked cars. It's great handling of this so far. So now I'm going to hit back my home address here and we're going to get it to go a certain way that I want it to. So we're going to take a right on Johnson Street up here and then we're immediately going to turn left. We do have a car coming at us here. I'll be turning into our oncoming lane here. We should be out of their way here. Let's see what the car does. Good job. No cutting of the throttle, braking. Very confident. Good stuff. All right, so we got to kind of peek out here. Good job. Didn't hang on longer than it needed to there. So much better than what we saw yesterday. And then again, you can see the car accelerates too much there. So I have to again, adjust the throttle. And by throttle, I keep saying throttle, I mean max speed limit, so. See if we stay away from some of these, you know, melty, melty snow banks here to our right. There's one up here that's kind of sticking out. Yeah, doing a good job there. So, kudos to the occupancy networks. They seem to be doing a great job with these snow banks and avoiding them. That definitely was not there in the earlier time. Sorry about that. My GoPro just cut out again. It loves to die on me usually 20 minutes into my video. So, um, but yeah, the occupancy networks have done a good job for the most part. These ones that are more melted, you can drive over those, but I would typically avoid them, but... And I'm slowing down to 15 here just because I never know what's around this corner. All right. Well, we had that one disengagement right off the bat in downtown St. Paul. Otherwise, we had a pretty good drive overall. So, haven't seen any really major regressions. Just gotta fix that one turn in, in um, St. Paul and we'll be good to go. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.